Our next speaker of uh, today's session is Dr. Mohammad uh, Shahid Ali, who is going to educate us on uh, urological emergencies and how to, how to handle them. Good evening, all of you. So, the last session of the uh, day, all are eager to be in the next room. But uh, I am in the middle of a session where I have to finish it fast to keep up the promise of a stomachs now. <laughs> so, compared to the other specialties, urological emergencies are rare. This is why you do not find urologists more in the emergency room. But then yes, we also do share a few emergencies where we can classify into two groups, the non-traumatic and the traumatic uh, group. Generally, we have hematuria as the most common cause of emergency where the patients rush to the, uh, to the OPD as well as emergency room with hematuria. Most of the hematurias with origin of from the urological side are self-limiting, but then they are great. So what do you do? We have to go to a long list of uh, questions just to make sure that these do not cause any problem. So elderly male with hematuria, yes, they do come with, uh, with this problem. Generally, the most common cause of hematuria in elderly male is enlarged prostate. But yes, tumors of the bladder and also tumors of the uh, pelvic glacial system is also a second diagnosis. The duration of hematuria is also important. Usually they come up with the first episode of hematuria, they land up into the OPD or the emergency room. One important question is whether this hematuria is painful or painless is critical because generally patients having hematuria with a slight back pain will give us an idea that the origin of blood is somewhere in the upper, upper tracts. So they cause something called as clot colic. And then the timing of hematuria, whether the hematuria is initial or whether it is in the middle of uh, passing urine or it is terminal. Initial hem hematuria gives us an idea that the origin of blood is somewhere distal to the prostate, somewhere in the urethra or tip. Patients with simple phimosis can also land up with initial hematuria. But with terminal or midstream hematuria somewhere the location could be in the bladder or in around the prostate. Uh, I am sorry, uh, the terminal hematuria can be at the, at the level of the bladder or the prostate. And uh, how dark the color of the blood is? This is uh, something uh, which is very subjective. Generally, we see a lot of patients with hematuria and will be able to gauge at whether this bleed is an acute or a chronic. Generally, the bleed what patients come is a dark colored bleed. So, this is something where there is already a clot formed and the urine flows over this clot and this gives some what a dark colored bleed. So this should not worry much to the clinician as to uh, take a decision. But if the hematuria is quite red, fresh blood, then yes, it initiates uh, evaluation at an early stage. So gross hematuria is the thing which uh, pulls the patient to the emergency room. It has to, uh, the history should be taken as, uh, as to what is the origin of the uh, lead. Investigations to support the diagnosis in, in the form of ultrasonography which screens the upper tract. We will have to look for any hydronephrosis, if there is any stone, if there is any clot, if there is any clot in the bladder, if there is a stone in the bladder or if there is any tumor arising in the bladder or in the upper tract. So what do we do in emergency situation if the patient comes? That is a common question. So, Make sure that the patient is not in retention in the first step. So palpate the bladder if there is no clot, non-tender, non-tender, non-tender abdomen. Patient is voiding normally, but associated with hematuria, then it is not a cause of worry in the initial setup. Suppose if, if patient is having severe symptoms, unable to void, is dribbling urine, is passing clots, then you have to get a screening ultrasound of the bladder. Make sure that if there are any clots, then plan to uh, evacuate those clots in the emergency by putting a three-way catheter. We have catheters uh, ranging from 12 French to 24 French. The biggest possible uh, caliber of the catheter should go in the case of hematuria. Pass, give a bladder wash and if there is any ongoing existing bleed, start an irrigation of the bladder. Suppose if the irrigation is not going, maybe you can do a catheter change. Try to aspirate the, those clots through a septosyringe and then again reinitiate the 
bladder wash. The next commonest uh, cause of emergency is a ureteric colic or a renal colic. But then the generally this pain starts from flank, goes down to the uh, groin and sometimes to the external genitalia also. When this type of pain comes, it has to be have this this pain should be should have a differential diagno diagnosis with uh, sometimes pneumonia, ovarian pathologies, acute appendicitis, sometimes a rare cause of uh, torsion testes as well. Just to be uh, to give a clinical idea, we had a patient which was referred from Tubkur. He had a pain duration of about six to eight hours. They got an ultrasound which showed a seven millimeter of ureteric stone in the lower ureter and he was referred to us and just while examining uh, at the end we had just had a look at his external genitalia which is which is showing uh, the right testis slightly enlarged we just saw with we just confirmed that swelling with an ultrasound scrotum and that showed a complete torsion testis with absent flow so just to have to highlight the point that any abdominal examination or acute abdomen you have to complete your examination of the external genitalia have a sneak down there before you get into trouble so uh, in those uh, cases it's very difficult to counsel as to what is the cause of pain but generally acute torsion of testis holds the upper hand holds the priority where you had to treat that torsion with in fact orchidectomy and then clear the stone later so when you have a ureteric colic, what is to be done? There is a dilemma whether to do an ultrasound first or a CT first. So as a, a urologist, I would be more comfortable to tell that a CT KUB is the most, is the best choice to diagnose a ureteric colic, provided in what center or what situation you are. The guidelines say that CT KUB is the best one, but yes, ultrasonography is non-inferior also. It is has uh, lesser. It has no risk of radiation. It can be repeated multiple times. But ultrasonography has inferior uh, sensitivity in diagnosing ureteric colics in patients with higher BMI and in pregnant women. Yes, it is the only choice available. So these are the sensitivities and specificities of specificities of uh, imaging modalities in uh, ureteric stones. I just wanted to highlight that the CT has the best sensitivity and specificity. Yes, ultrasonography also has increased sensitivity, but it is less specific. Especially when you have lower ureteric stones, the diagnostic specificity and sensitivity goes much more lesser co compared to a plain CT KUV. So MRI has a small role in especially pregnant women where uh, we cannot expose them to uh, ionizing radiation. But this modality is used very rarely. The first thing to be done in urotric colic is pain relief. Generally, NSAIDs are the best one to relieve pain. Additionally, you can add opiates also. So, what do you do for urotric colic? You do an ultrasound, you have a size of stone, you have a location of stone, and then you give pain relief. Now, what do you do next? That's a, that was a question I think I got from the audience. We keep a cutoff of about 5 to 6 millimeter of stone in the ureter as a sufficient uh, size to have a watchful waiting up to 4 weeks, provided there are no other factors. He is, should not be a diabetic, he is not in sepsis, he is not having any high fever or a UTI. If all these things are ruled out, a simple 5 to 6 millimeter of stone can be managed conservatively with analgesics. Additionally, you, have can, you can ask the patient to have good amount of fluids. A key point here is ask the patient not to take excessive fluids during the time of colic because that gives that increases his symptoms. So you can ask them to have uh, you can cut down the fluids during the time of colic, take the painkiller and wash them. <coughs> Suppose at about two to four weeks if the stone is not coming uh, coming out and if there is recurrent UTI, if there is any flank pain and if it is a solitary kidney, yes all these things. Uh, should be referred to a urologist for a, a removal of the stone. So that's what I have told that the indications of interventions are in the pain doesn't uh, fails to uh, respond with analgesics. If there's any associated fever, if the renal functions are increasing, if the obstruction is unrelieved after four weeks, and due to personal or occupational reason, if the patient has to travel abroad or somewhere else, then if they have a stone sticking in the ureter, then 
I think it's probably <coughs> best thing to do is to stand that patient and send him. The next emergency, common emergency, what we uh, see is uh, urinary <coughs> retention. Now, this can be an acute or a chronic event. Patient will have an acute pain abdomen, unable to void with a severe lower abdominal pain and occasionally associate with hematuria. These patients are typically elderly and the most common cause for acute urinary retention is enlarged prostate as there are multiple other causes also. Chronic urinary retention, yes, they, these patients also have a full bladder but they are usually pain free. Common causes include enlargement of prostate gland either because of uh, benign nature or uh, carcinoma of the prostate. A urethral structure, this especially uh, is seen in younger adults. A prostatic abscess in immunocompromised or diabetic patients, this should have, we should have a suspicion of this. And ureteric stones and stones sitting at the bladder neck also can cause urinary retention. Occasionally patients having dysfunctional voiding can cause uh, uh, with the secondary constipation also has can have uh, urinary retention. Occasionally in patients in acute post-operative phase where patients have undergone a perineal surgery in the form of a hemorrhoidectomy with severe perineal pain also can land up in urinary retention also. One more cause what we uh, get in the ward is patients after sometimes <coughs> ENT surgeries where they use uh, phenylephrine or uh, nasal decongest decongestants, these patients also have uh, that those can also precipitate urinary retention. So, make sure that these things are uh, well taken care of in the history taking. Females also can present with urinary retention, especially with pelvic organ prolapse, urethral stenosis or and post surgery for urinary uh, incontinence in the form of uh, obturator tripping. So, the best method modality to, to, to decompress bladder is the Foley's catheter. So, uh, the most common question is to what size of catheter is to be used. The best thing is to place a catheter with the minimal most strength. So generally, what we do, what we have a, a thumb rule is an adult with a reasonable uh, height and BMI, we would start with 14 French and we can go up to 18 French. In a children, yes, we have option from infant feeding tube, uh, feeding tube up to from six up to uh, twelve French of police catheter. If catheter doesn't go, yes, we have to uh, decompress the bladder suprapubically. So, 